Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In Moto 16.1, we have quite a few new options for the select by previous operation. Selection operation, that's a lot to say. Um, in procedural modeling, it's really important to be able to select polygons, points, edges from previous operations. So if you're doing a bevel, you want to select just the faces from that previous bevel so you can delete them or bevel them again, that kind of thing. And what we kind of did in 16.1 is we crowdsourced some ideas to the developers, uh, suggesting some, some more select by previous operation components. And I hope this becomes more of a thing, kind of like the small fixes video I did earlier, where just little things like this that can be easily implemented, aren't big asks, can be sort of crowdsourced into this pipeline of, of developing Moto. And I just want to show some of the new ones that are added because they're really useful. So here's a cube, right? And so if I previously, if I wanted to just bevel the top polygon of the cube, I would have to do like a select by index, which is a selection operation, which, you know, you know each polygon has its own indice number. Or I would have to, um, which sort of breaks the procedural nature of it often when you just select by index. Or I'd have to do some network where I'm just selecting the normals facing the positive Y, stuff like that. But now if I want to do a polygon bevel uh, here and just on just that top polygon, I have a select by previous, or we have some options from the select by previous operation command. So I just add that on there. And all the primitives now have a whole bunch of um, tags, sort of pre-built tags that you can select and just do your operations on those. So now I'm just doing the some omni hall here and doing it on the top. And I can always just go back and change that. So it is procedural, right? So I could set it to sides. Now we just turn off uh, group polygons really quick here. Or I can set it to all, or I can set it to bottom, or I can set it to um, caps, top and bottom. Uh, or I can change the orientation of the cube, right? And so it'll change the orientation of those as well. So it, it you know, it, it looks at the axis and things like that. So it's just more, you know, it's a better procedural way to operate. And I could do things like this on a cylinder. Like how often have you wanted to make a tube? So you make a cylinder and then I can just do like a delete, right? And then again, I can just do a select by previous operation and have it, instead of having to do, you know, some other, uh, more complex method of trying to select those, like a select by ingon or select by, we'll just do um, caps and delete both of those. Then I can just do uh, like a thicken and there you go, got a tube, right? So select by previous operation is a, a really great way to do procedural modeling. It's a really essential way. And the more options we have, the more items that are tagged with with the result of that operation that we could later call upon, uh, the more useful it is. So again, I can just go back and change this anytime. I could just do the top. I can, there's the top. I could just do uh, the sides. Now we've got this, right? So it's really useful. I'll just do one more. Cone, same thing. So I'll just do a, a push or something like that. And then again, select by previous operation is going to give me some options. So I pick my cone and I pick my sides. And I just push out the sides, right? Or maybe I want to push out the bottom, like so. Okay. So really useful. And there's a whole bunch more. So I'm just going to go through a few here. So we've got our cube. I'll just delete my. Uh, we'll keep my. Uh, I'll keep my bevel there. That's fine. We'll just change this to. Um, change this back to like top. Okay. And then I'm going to press in for a new mesh item. And again, in 16.1, you can just hit enter to rename it, call it curve. And then I'm just going to draw a little curve here, looking down so the work plane will just keep it on X, Y, and draw a curve. Also, what's cool is there's some new advanced viewport options here, which I'm not going to go through them all, but I'll just go through a couple. So I can change the color of this curve and draw options. I'll just say draw style wireframe and wireframe to user color. And we'll just go to like this sort of, I, I find like this sort of purple fuchsia color works pretty well, but it's still a little thin. What's cool in 16.1 is I can hit uh, O for viewport options. And under advanced options, as long as you have the uh, line anti-aliasing to full, which it defaults to, uh, you can do things like um, get a thicker curve thick, you know, thicker curve thickness. It's sort of redundant there, but bump that up to two. Look, look how much better the curve looks, right? Even edge thickness, I can bump that up as well. So I've got thicker edges on this guy. It looks a little more like almost like Unreal Engine when you grab these guys or select edges. Just looks a little better and our curve looks better, right? So I'm actually gonna select my 
curve and just uh, make it a little bit bigger here. And uh, I can go into my cube here and all the cloning operations also are um, given new select my previous operation uh, component. So I can do like a curve clone or I can just type in clone here. And you can see I've got, uh, we'll just do something simple like, um, like an array. And just press C for uh, channel hall there and just get my two by two array going there. And if I want to do like a delete, I can select my previous operation and my array will give me some options, right? So I can go select my previous operation, select my array, and I'm just gonna select clone one, and just delete clone one. Or maybe I'll select clone three and just delete clone three. Uh, or if I go to my array and say replace source and then go up to delete, I'll now have four, uh, four options. I'm replacing my source with the clones. So they're all clones now, all four of them. So it's really pretty, pretty cool, pretty useful, right? In fact, I can uh, add a curve clone. It just all the clone uh, tools have this now. So um, we'll pick my uh, curve path here and clone along the path. I'm gonna turn off the array and turn off the delete. And then again, I can just press C and right click to get the number I want there. So we'll just get three of those. I can also um, turn off uh, align to path and get those back uh, aligned to Y like that. And I believe I can also just uh, replace source on there to get rid of that source cube. So there you go. And the same thing, if I want to just do like um, a polygon bevel and here I get I'm hitting tab to bring up this mesh op browser like you would in Houdini or, or Nuke. It's a lot uh, better, I think, than hitting the button. This is another 16.1 improvement. There's the other video deals with that. So I'll go polygon bevel and I'll do a select my previous operation and I can pick my, you know, curve clone here and I'll pick like third one and uh, I'll just turn off group bevel and then just uh, maybe bevel these out a little bit. So yeah, cool, right? What else do we have? Let's do, um, I'm gonna turn off a few of these guys. So all the, all the primitives, all the cloning operations, curve clone, scatter clone, you know, linear clone, array clone, all those things, point clone, um, allow you to select uh, all the clones there. One thing I would actually like to see, turn on this back on, instead of doing, let's say I've just selected um, oh, my polygon bevel I've got, you know, just clone three. I can, I can duplicate this, control D duplicate, and I could pick, you know, clone four, and I could set that to add, and now they're both there, so it's just adding those together, so that's pretty cool. Um, but what I'd actually like to be able to do, instead of just grabbing one from a drop down, I wish it worked more like an array selection where I could just type one comma three or one comma four or one dash three comma five, you know, that sort of input that Moto's really good at. And I think that would be better. But for now, you can duplicate if you want to. Um, OK, so let's let's back up and, and do a couple more things here. So let's got my uh cube here i'll hide my curve and let's do like an axis slice so a lot of the slicing and um duplication turned on snapping there didn't do that do axis slice so a lot of the slicing and duplication or um uh subdivision type slicing and subdivision and uh type uh, operations you can now select um from previous operation on those as well. So I could have like, you know, three there. So I've got three axis slice and I can go um, add another operator and say uh, edge, uh, we'll do the edge split like that. And then I could do a select by previous operation. I could just grab those uh, three there in the middle. I just select axis slice and I want the new edges, right? And so there's my edge split, press C for channel hall and there we go. Pop open my uh, mini props here. Oh, mini props doesn't have Cap sections on it, need to fix that. So there's cap sections. So again, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to have those selectable there, right? So I can even uh, do something like, um, let me just turn off this one and do another like uh, edge uh, subdivide, right? So edge subdivide, I can put that right here. And again, I get, let me turn on verts. You can see it subdividing all the edges, but let's say I just want to do a select by previous operation and I just want to subdivide the axis slice edges. Okay, just the new edges there. So there we have that. And edge split can actually, we'll do instead of an edge split, we'll do a vertex 
uh, bevel. And edge split has select by previous operation tags on it now. So I can just go select by previous operation. And I'm going to say edge split. And I just want those like, um, not edge split, but edge subdivide. I just want those new vertices there. So now I can just subdivide those new vertices and even get some new vertices there if I want to, right? So all this stuff is on there. It's actually, it's, it's, it's super useful. Select by, um, you know, edges to curves. It'll let you select just the curves as a previous operation. I can even do like a, 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 a subdivide mesh or a triangulate mesh and just get those new edges there. So there's a subdivide. Let me just turn off some of this stuff. So we'll just do a, a faceted subdivide like that. And then I'll do, um, I gotta use a tab here that we have it, uh, like an edge bevel and a select by previous operation of um, the edge of the uh, subdivide. So select subdivide, new edges, and there we go. I can do that if I want to, right? So all super useful. Now keep in mind some things like, let's say, let's go all the way down to our cube here, right? And I want to do an edge chamfer. Okay, so edge chamfer likes um, edges. It wants edges, right? And the select by previous operation on that cube is going to give me polygon. So I select the cube and I say I just want uh, the top. And I go to my edge chamfer and I'm like, well, why isn't this? Oh, actually, edge chamfer is actually getting it. Edge chamfer is actually going to do that conversion for you. Let me just try something because I think edge bevel may not. So this is still a useful thing to do. So we'll do um, edge bevel. So normally, uh, the more recent mesh operations in Moto will look at whatever component is being fed them and convert it into the component they want. Like edge chamfer always wants edges. If you're feeding it polygons, it's smart enough to convert it into edges. I'm not sure edge bevel, which is older, is smart enough to do that. Let me just double check here. So we'll do select by previous operation. We'll do the cube and we'll do the top and we'll see if we can bevel the edges there. So the edges are not beveling. So what I would do is I would just add a convert in there and you're converting from polygons, which is what this select by previous operation on the cube gives you that top polygon. And that convert converts it from the polygon into whatever this is looking for. So you, some people will get converted and think, well, why doesn't it say convert polygons to what? Why isn't it giving me options? What it's doing is it's just, it's doing the uh, two part for you. Is we're converting to whatever this operation above me is looking for. So it's gonna convert that to edges and then I can go back into my edge bevel and, and just, you know, channel hall, whatever I want here, right? Sweet. So yeah, so all the sort of subdivision commands like uh, subdivide, triangulate, um, the slicing commands, they all feed into um, give new select by previous operation options. Uh, all the primitives do, uh, all the clone operations do. And there's probably a couple more in there as well. So this is great for procedural modeling and we just need more and more of this type of stuff added because the more components we can get our hands on from select by previous operation, then we can tag them, we can add them together, we can make selection sets out of them and then operate them on you know farther up the stack. So it's a super important component to procedural modeling. It's nice to see uh, us getting some, some, some more work done here and not just forgetting about these things that were, were made you know, one or two or three versions ago. And like I said, I think we could just, as users, you know, when we see something useful, let's try to crowdsource these together. We'll put them on a spreadsheet. We'll put them, we'll try to upvote them perhaps. And, and perhaps we'll do this through Pixel Fondue and get them implemented into new versions of Moto. Yum, yum.